Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's topical webinar, Creating Database Connections with TechLink Software. And we normally have a basic and advanced webinar for all of our labeling products once a month. And here at TechLinks, we recognize there is a lot to learn about in the labeling world. And because of this, we have launched a series of training webinars focused on specific topics that we expect most of our current users to face. Today's webinar is going to focus on one of our most requested topics, database connections. Um, the basic and advanced training webinars are prerequisites for this. Just keep that in mind. So with the basic and the advanced webinars, we go through all the different variables in, in the software, specifically the database uh, variable, as well as the table lookup variables. So we're not gonna go um, too in depth on things like when printed fields and uh, you know, date stamps and timestamps. We're just purely focused on database connections here. Now for today's webinar, I'm going to be using CodeSoft. So if you are a label view user, the interface and steps are going to be very similar for our label matrix users. Um, many of the same features are gonna be available, but there may be some slight differences. We do recommend using label view and CodeSoft when bringing database connections into your label designs. Uh, luckily upgrading from label matrix to label view or label view to code soft is fairly simple with uh, with all of our built in label file converters. Now just a bit about myself. My name is Rob Learman. I'm a sysadmin and sometimes enterprise support technician here at TechLinks. Uh, I've been here for a little over 10 years now. I uh, recently moved to Arizona and I'm still trying to figure out how marketing got a picture of my adorable dog Maya. And before we jump into the webinar, we just have a few housekeeping items to get through. You've probably already noticed all the headsets, microphones, telephones, those are all muted on your end. It is done proactively just when you get uh, quite a few individuals in these webinars, the lines can get a bit cluttered. So as I said, we do mute those. Uh, any questions at all, feel free to ask. You can just expand the question section in the GoToWebinar console, type in your question, click send, we'll see that pop up on our end. We'll be able to address those questions during the Q&A session uh, towards the end. Now that we have the housekeeping items in place, let's move into today's agenda. It's a pretty prevalent question, why use database connections in barcode labeling? And we'll take a look at the different types of databases, um, you know, spreadsheets versus uh, relational databases and cloud-based or on-prem. I uh, already covered that, but then we have uh, spreadsheets versus databases. Uh, then we have basic data management principles. Um, not gonna be spending too much time on this. Uh, then we have the live training demonstration. So we're gonna be jumping into CodeSoft. And at the very end, we have our Q&A section. So why use database connections? All three of these main points uh, really fall under the same umbrella or at least are closely tied together. Uh, so when you're using a, a database connection, the fields and the label become variables. They're no longer static. Uh, this is going to in turn make all of the data come from the database, not the label. And this is going into that third point, uh, a few templates are better than hundreds. So what does that mean? Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen an end user with, uh, it's basically the same label template just copied hundreds of times. So what I see a lot of is someone will have a a label with part number one, two, three. And when they get a new product, that should be part number four, five, six, they'll right click on a copy of the first template, paste and create a second identical label template, then modify the field in, in the newly created label template to be four, five, six, and maybe what other updates need to be made. So now they have two labels. So this can be a bit cumbersome when you have hundreds or maybe even thousands of part numbers or products. Um, Rather than do this, we encourage the use of spreadsheets or databases. So this way you're only managing one sheet and one label versus hundreds or maybe even thousands of individual labels. So at this point, if you get a new part number, all you're really doing is adding that part number to the table. Um, if one becomes obsolete, you're just removing the record. You know, if one is updated, you're just updating that record. All of these types of databases listed can be connected to our software. Uh, the most easily accessible and usable for a lot of our end users is going to be Excel, uh, you know, just a simple spreadsheet. And now that the trend is moving towards the cloud, it might be Google Sheets or Excel Online, which is 
uh, basically just Excel. The only difference for us in this webinar is going to be how you connect to it in the software, which we'll show you during that live demo. The order of the types of databases listed here is really the complexity of the data itself, or at least how it's stored. Um, you know, flat files or text files and comma separated files uh, that can be opened up in Notepad or any other text editor to view the data. It's, it's usually a data sheet that's exported from an ERP system, as no one I know would really just open up a Notepad document and start typing in, you know, data, comma, data, comma, data, et cetera. Um, next up are spreadsheets. As I said, probably the most common. This is where you're going to see a lot of actual, or uh, you see an actual grid of data with rows and columns. So everybody's pretty familiar with Excel. And then we finally have relational databases. Uh, relational databases are sort of a compilation of spreadsheets that are tied together using some sort of primary key, some sort of unique identifier. So just picture a lot of spreadsheets just tied together. There are two types of database connections in our software. There's ODBC and OLEDB. So they both serve the same purpose, which is the gluing the database to the label template. So there are different pros and cons to using each one. Uh, ODBC is a bit older. Um, it does not save username and password. Uh, now, when you pull up an Excel sheet, it's probably not going to prompt for a username and a password, but uh, SQL and Oracle most likely will. Uh, this doesn't mean you can't use ODBC connections for SQL and Oracle because there are ways around this. Uh, maybe the sysadmin you know, created a view that doesn't require this. Um, but what would that look like in the software if it did? Uh, you'd have to pull up the label template. And if you wanted to view the data or go to print, it would prompt you to sign in you know, every time you print a record. So you can get around that using OLEDB or again, um, not assigning a username and password to that view. So a good pro for ODBC is that it can be pushed out through GPO, through group policy. So uh, if a sysadmin has maybe 100 PCs that they're managing, ODBC connections can just automatically placed on those machines rather than having to go to each machine individually and locally install those. Uh, also, uh, OLE connections are what are used when you're using the software as a database connection wizard, not ODBC connections. And again, we'll show you both of those during that live demo. Some data management principles. You've probably heard this before, but the top two are very important. Proper backups of databases and proper backup of your external files. You want to back it up frequently. Um, quite a few times I'll jump into an end user's PC because they're having issues connecting the database. Um, the label's there. We take a look at the label. The connection string is there. Dissect the connection string, see where it's pulling from. We'll try to find that database, and it's just not there. Um, can't really say what happens every time, but um, it's really not on us to know where your database is located. So again, it's going to really benefit you to back up that database uh, and back it up frequently. Centralized database locations really help. Uh, again, if you have just something simple like an Excel sheet, maybe you have five print workstations, you don't want that Excel sheet individually on each of those workstations because if uh, something gets modified in one of those workstations, the other four are not gonna be updated. So it's usually best to have it on some sort of file share and have each of those PCs pulling from that centralized location so that if the database or the spreadsheet gets updated, all five workstations would, uh, would see that update. Also assigning a relevant name to your data. Um, our software, when you're creating a database connection, um, we'll give it a unique name every time, but it starts with connection one, then connection two, then connection three. And uh, quite a few times, again, I'll jump into a PC. There's some database issues. We'll find the connection string, or I'm sorry, we'll look for the connection string and <laughs> what we'll see is connection one through 50. And uh, nobody seems to know which one we should be pulling from, so we have to kind of look at each one. Um, it's really going to help if, if you know, you need to pull from the sales order database, you call that connection string sales order or customer info or, you know, something unique at least so that you know what you're trying to uh, connect to or pull from. Also, understanding how your database functions and its limitations. Um, this is going to go between uh, using a flat file or a spreadsheet or an actual um, relational database. Flat files will uh, lock themselves out. So if you're, if you're pulling from a flat file or a spreadsheet, 
uh, really you can't be modifying that data as you're trying to print. Um, it's going to lock itself out, so it's going to be read only. Uh, that's not going to be true with relational databases. Uh, you can be inside the relational database making updates to it as you are also accessing that data. Now, within our software, we have two ways to pull um, two different types of variables, I should say. We have database variables and table lookup variables. Um, the easiest way to think about the two is when you're using a database variable or database connection, when you go to file and print, you're going to see a snapshot of that table. It's going to look like the actual spreadsheet. You're going to be able to scroll up and down the records, uh, choose a record and print it, or choose a range of records and print that. Now, with a table lookup, you're not going to see that data. You're not going to see the spreadsheet. You're just going to see a blinking cursor, and it's, ex it's expecting you to type in some sort of primary key. It's going to reference the, the spreadsheet or the table at that point and pull that record. So really, when, you, when you're kind of thinking about if you want to use a database connection in the software or a table lookup in the software, it's sort of what you want your end user to see. This is actually going to bring us to our training demo. We're going to do a deep dive on a simple database connection. We'll pull up one of the existing label templates or one of the sample labels and kind of dissect it. Then we'll jump into table lookups, followed by the UDL connection string explanation, so where those are located. And then lastly, we'll finish with pulling data from the cloud. So give me a moment here. I'm going to switch over to my VM. Bear with me for just a moment here. All right. So we should be seeing CodeSoft. a blank label. I'm just going to pull up one of the sample labels. So we're going to go to file open and uh, we'll use that identity label. So just a bit of a throwback to some of the basic and the advanced webinars. All of the variables are going to be on the right hand side. These are the data sources. So we're primarily going to be looking at database variables and table lookups. Uh, also if you're not seeing this window it's very easy to toggle on. You're just going to use the view drop down and you can select data sources. That'll pop up that window if you're not seeing it. Now we've already got some static fields on here and some variable fields. Anything that has this blue circle around it is going to be a variable. In fact, if I highlight one of these, we'll see a red arrow point, pointing to the variable it's pulling from. Alternatively, if we highlight the variable, we'll see the field on the label so we can see where they're tied in. But now that we have a database connection on this sample label, uh, if we go to file and print, we'll see the simple print window and we have the database tab. So uh, this is what you're seeing when you're using the database connection, not a table lookup. So we're going to see this snapshot of the table that we're pulling from. And here we can highlight a record to print and we'll see that label update in the background or highlight a range of records, uh, click print and that's what we'll be printing. Alternatively, if we just want to view a snapshot of the, uh, of the data, we can right click on the database data source, choose view the query resulting data. It's going to show us a little snapshot of the spreadsheet that we're pulling from. And uh, with this sample label, um, I believe it's going to be an access database that we're pulling from. It just has one table in there. But you can also print from this window. There's an added quantity column and you can choose batch job or um, put in quantities and print out batch jobs. So maybe you want to print out two records for record two and jump down to record seven and print five of these. So you can point to the quantities and then click the print button up here. So diff different ways to print. But let's recreate this starting with a blank label template. So I'm going to close this one down. We'll start with a new label. I'm just going to make this one a little bit bigger. All right. So to get started with a very simple database connection, we're going to right click on database and choose wizard. It's gonna bring up the new data source wizard. First thing it's prompting us is to select a connection to an existing data source. So if we take a look at this dropdown, these are the 
ODBC and OLE connections. Quite a few already in here. A lot of these are sample database connections, um, some I've toyed around with. Uh, if it does not have an icon to the left of the name, like these top ones, that means it's an ODBC connection. If it does have this little icon, that's an OLE connection. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, like I said, these are all sample databases up at the top. So obviously you're gonna have your own spreadsheet or your own database that you wanna pull from. So how would you get yours in this dropdown? You click the new button just to the right of that. So the new database connection wizard pops up. We have four main types. We have Access, Excel, SQL, and Oracle. Um, pretty straightforward for these. The wizard's gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Uh, if you wanted to connect to an Excel sheet, we would highlight Excel. This is where you wanna give it a, a unique name. Otherwise, it's just gonna be connection one, two, three. We click next. All it's having you do is browse out to the Excel sheet. That's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, same with access. Highlighting access, giving it a unique name, clicking next. Browsing out to the access database. Access has the option to add a username and password. Uh, if there isn't one, you would just leave it blank. SQL and Oracle are a little bit different. Usually there's a dedicated server involved. Uh, so if you highlight either one of these, you're still giving the uh, connection string a unique name. When you click next, you're just popping in the server name and how you're authenticating to that server, whether it's through Windows authentication or the actual SQL database authentication, but still very similar. Um, so those, because we're using the wizard, are going to create an OLE connection. ODBC, if we highlight ODBC and click finish, the ODBC data source administrator window is going to pop up. And what we're really doing is piggybacking off of Windows functionality. Uh, so if I close this down and actually launch the, the control panel straight through Windows, um, go to administrative tools, we'll see that same thing in here, ODBC data source administrator. So same window, um, it defaults the user DSN, everything that's placed in the system DSN. So when you install CodeSoft, it's actually installing these uh, connection strings for the sample labels and the sample databases that come with CodeSoft. And this is that uh, pro, that one pro that I was referring to with ODBC. So if you have, um, you know, hundreds of workstations that you're managing and they're all gonna be using the same database connections, you can just push that out through group policy. Anything listed in here before the software even gets installed will show up in the software under this dropdown. So it's just automatic, all of the ODBC connections on the PC are just automatically going to show up in here. Uh, for this webinar, we're just gonna use the identity connection. Everybody should have that. As I said, it gets installed with the software. So if we do choose this connection, and again, this is sort of the glue between the label and the database, we glue the two together. So now that we've glued the two together, we're just choosing the table that we're pulling from. And if you have Excel, sort of similar, Excel doesn't have multiple tables, but it does have multiple workbooks. So you're either gonna choose the table or the workbook. Our sample database only has one, it's called identity, so that's what we'll be choosing. And then it's going to show us the columns in that table or workbook. We're just gonna check off the columns that we want brought in. We click next, it's gonna prompt us how do we want this information displayed on the label. By default, it's gonna be none. So that would create the variables, variables, but nothing would get placed on the label. I'll just set them all as text fields so we can see something. Uh, and then we click finish. And we'll see those fields on the label. So it's really that simple. We now have an existing database connection. So if I go to file and print, we'll see that same database tab, the same label we're pulling from in that sample database. Now that sample label had an image it was pulling as well, which was updating with the different records. Now, how would we go about doing that? If we view that query resulting data again, if we view that snapshot, the, the image is actually tied into this first name column, but we, we don't really have a full file path or extension in here. We just have the file name. So how do you go about doing something similar to that? Uh, if we, Use the tools drop down, select configuration. Uh, you'll take a look at the default folders, and there's going to be an images directory in here. If we take a look at this images directory, I'm just going to copy this and we'll browse out there. Uh, 
you'll see those 8-bit images listed right here. These are actually all of the sample images that come with the software. So you can have BMPs, JPEGs, um, TIFFs, GIFs, PCX files. Um, they're all gonna be able to pull into the software. However, once you have that database connection, you don't wanna place the variable on the label as a text field, you'll want to place it on the label as an image. So you would just click and drag that back on the label. And now we'll choose image. And now our image should update as we move up and down the records. Now, not everybody's environment is the same. Um, maybe you have hundreds of images and they all have their own subdirectory. That's fine. Um, not going to be as simple as just dropping the image in this images directory, which I should point out can be changed. So if you have your own directory with images, maybe on a file share, you can certainly click out, uh, click browse and browse out to that map drive. But again, uh, maybe you have multiple subdirectories for your images. That's perfectly fine. Um, however, at that point, you you need more than just the file name. You would need the full path up to and including the extension. But again certainly doable. So next we're going to jump into table lookups. Again, very similar to the database connection. We're going to pull from the exact same table. But as I was saying, one of the main differences is what your end user is going to see. They're not going to see the snapshot. They're just going to type in um, we'll use first name. So they'll be typing in, usually you don't wanna use something like a first name, you wanna have something unique like a serial number or you know, an ID or a SKU number, something uh, that isn't going to be repeated. But for this example, we'll use first name. Uh, but again, they're not going to see this snapshot to pick and choose from. It's just gonna be a blinking cursor. They'll type in the key value and it's going, to, so if I type in Doris, it's gonna print out this record. So we're gonna close this label down. We'll start with another blank label. Now, the first thing we need to do is create a when printed field. This is going to be pretty straightforward. We're just going to right click on when printed, choose add. Um, the name doesn't matter for this webinar. We'll just call it key. And you can leave the value blank. I like to put in something I know that's in the spreadsheet or the table. So I'll just put Doris back in there. And we're all set. So right now we have one, run, one when printed field. And if I go to file and print, there's no database tab, there's just the form tab. Now, how do we get the table lookup to pull from that? We're gonna right click on table lookup, choose wizard. A lot of this is going to look similar. So we're still choosing a connection to an existing data source. So we're gonna choose that identity connection string. We're gonna choose the same table. Uh, the only new drop downs we have are key fields and value. The key fields drop down is going to contain the list of columns in this table. And we need to choose which one we're referencing. We're referencing our first name. And the value is going to be the when printed field. So I only have one variable on the label called key. So that's my only option in this drop down right now. So when I type something in this when printed variable, if it matches something in this first name column, it's going to display these columns down here. We're just going to select all. We'll click finish. I'm sorry, we'll click next. Uh, set everything as text, click finish. And now we have those fields on the label. So the only reason that we are seeing things on our label is because I have information in this form. So if, if I put the cursor in here and hit the backspace key, everything's gonna go blank. There's no Dory in that table, it's just Doris. So I put the S back in there, we'll see that populate. Uh, to jump to a different record, we're just typing it in. So if Ned was one, let's see that update if we put in Jack. I think there's a Mary. So again, one of the key differences between table lookup database is just what you want your end users to see at print time. Now the other key difference is that you're going to use table lookups to sort of daisy chain. Uh, tables. So just to set this up, I'm going to, we're going to close this down again. I have two blank labels here and I just want to create a very quick connection so that I can show you the data in these two spreadsheets.
this is sort of a uh, sort of mirroring a relational database. So uh, usually you'll have those when you want to break up the data between tables. Um, you just can't jam everything into the exact same spreadsheet. Maybe you have a huge list of uh, contacts. So very small sample data set, but you kind of get the idea. So this is going to be our contact table. Um, and then there's going to be another one maybe solely for orders. So we're going to create one for order information. If we take a look at this data, again, just two records, but there's a, an order number, the item description, and quantity. But because they're relational databases, um, the tables are tied together using some sort of key. And for us, that's going to be the order number. So this table, the order item table, has a column called order. And if we jump back over to the other one, you'll see first name, last name, address, city, state, zip, and again, order number. So we're using this order number to tie the two tables together. So we already on this label are pulling in information from our contact table. We can use table lookup to daisy chain and pull in the other table at the same time. Now to do that, we're gonna right click on table, choose wizard. Uh, the data source is going to pull from the order info at this point. Uh, we're gonna keep the sheet the same. Now the key field dropdown, Again, we're going to choose um, what we're referencing, which is going to be order. Now, this is the main difference. Um, before, we chose a one printed field because the end user was just typing in some information. Now they're scrolling up and down records, choosing a record. And uh, what we need to choose is the order number variable from the database connection, which is right up here. So whenever we choose a record in our database connection, it's going to display an order number if that order number equals the order <laughs> in the order item table, it will display these records down here. Now we already have order on the label once, so we don't need to include it here. We can just choose the item description and quantity. If we click next, we can add those as text fields. We'll move this towards the bottom. And now we have two tables on the same label. So if I jump to the next record, We'll see that update. One last tip and trick that I do want to point out uh, that has become very popular. It uh, doesn't really tie into table lookups, but it's how to um, print out a quantity. So let's say I'm going to use uh, the customer information spreadsheet as an example here. So let's say instead of order number, this is actually a quantity. So if you want to highlight record one and print that, if you have a quantity column that's hard coded into your table, uh, we can have the software print out that many records. So right now we have 11 and 22. So record one would always print out 11 times, record two would always print out 22 times. So just a, a nifty trick that a lot of people always ask about. So we're just including that in this webinar. So again, that's uh, pretty simple to do. It's a very quick formula. You're just gonna right click on formula. Uh, we'll choose add. It's actually the name of the formula that is very specific. If we scroll down to data sources, I'm just pointing out this data source that we're gonna use is the at zero quantity data source. So all you really need to know is the name of this formula needs to be very specific. It is at serial QTY. And then the value for this formula is just the name of the variable. So we were using order underscore uh, number, our order number. So we would just type in uh, order That's all there is to it. So click OK. That's just going to hang around in the back end. So if we ever print out record one, uh, it will print out 11 of these. If we print out record two, it would print out 22 of those. Next thing we're going to take a look at are those connection strings in a little bit more detail. Uh, if you, again, the connection strings we're referring to are in this, oh, not this one. 
we'll have to go to wizard in this top drop down. So those connection strings um, can pile up. Um, the ODBC ones can only be managed through the ODBC data source administrator, but where do we manage these OLE ones? That can be done through tools, administrator, OLEDB. So we'll see all the connection strings listed in here. Uh, quite a few times, again, I'll jump into an end user's PC and you'll see connection string one through 50. So there's 50 of them in there. Um, you know, the more we get talking, we find out that they're really only using two of them. They just don't know how to remove them from the software. So this is the window that you would highlight these and delete these, or if you want, you can edit them, um, have them pull from different locations, but keep the same name. So it's pretty straightforward. You're either uh, editing it or uh, deleting it. Um, now, where are these physically located on the PC? Again, if we jump to that default directories window, so we'll go to tools, configuration, uh, go to default folders. Second from the bottom, you'll see OLEDB connections. So if we browse out to this directory, we'll see all the OLE connections listed here. Now, by default, this directory is going to be local. So if you have uh, five workstations, again, each of them, or let's say you start out with one workstation, because that's usually where you're going to start. Uh, you get everything set up. You have your label template, you have the connection, you have the database. Everything prints perfect, but uh, as time moves on, you do a little bit more printing. So now you need a second workstation. Um, you take the label template, put it on the second workstation. The label's going to open up perfectly fine. However, it's not going to have this connection string because it's local to that first PC. So it's not going to know where to look to for that database or how to pull that information. Uh, a couple of ways around that. You certainly can just take those physical files and place them on that second workstation. Again, if there is some sort of change to the database um, connection string, it's only going to be on one PC at, the, at that point. So we really recommend put this on a map, uh, map drive or some sort of file share and have both PCs pulled from the same location. It's really going to make things a lot easier for you. Last thing we're taking a look at is how to pull information from the cloud. This is uh, sort of the trend that everybody's moving towards. Maybe you're working from home um, or the company is just spread out and it's all uh, remote. It's a lot easier to manage data with um, you know, Excel Online or Google Sheets. Uh, to make that connection, you're going to start with the Tools dropdown, choose uh, Cloud Accounts Manager. So here um, we're adding an account. Uh, this is where your, your data is stored. So if you have your own OneDrive or if you have SharePoint, it's, this is where it's going to be pulling from. So we'll use a Microsoft account because that's what our company is using. Uh, it's going to be a, the exact same process for Google accounts. So we're just going to log in here. And our company uses MFA, so give me just a moment to pull that up. All right, saying authentication is complete. We can close this window down. You'll see my name in there. We'll close that down. So there's a connection to the account at this point. So now we need to create the connection string. We're going to use that tools drop down one more time. And we're going to use administrator DB from the web. Now we're just creating an OLE connection. This is going to be pretty straightforward. So we're going to click new. And we're going to choose Microsoft Excel online. And again, the process is going to be the same for Google Sheets. Now we're giving that connection string a name. Uh, we can just call our test. We're clicking the browse button. It's going to show us our OneDrive in which sheet we want to pull from. I'll just grab that first sample sheet and we can test that connection, make sure it works. All right, click OK and click OK again. And we're all set. It's just business as usual now. So we can right click on database, choose wizard. And we'll see that test connection show up in the drop down now. We'll highlight that. I'm going to have to query my OneDrive. So it's going to take a moment. 
Uh, we'll grab a few records. I'll set those as text and click finish. And there we go. We can view the query resulting data. There, this, this spreadsheet is located on my OneDrive, but we're able to pull it into the software. So if you do have a, a remote workforce, it's gonna make things a little bit easier for you. So that's it for the live demo. We're gonna jump back into that slideshow. Bear with me for a moment to pull that up. All right. Just to recap, so you, database connections are a must have um, if you have enough data. So it wouldn't make sense if you just had one PC and you're maybe printing out 10 labels a day, but the more part numbers you get, the more inventory you have, uh, you'll see how it, how it really is going to clean up the labeling process. Uh, you saw how easy it was to do database connections as well as table lookups. And if you're wondering, you know, maybe you want to do more, you want to integrate with your ERP system, um, you want to track changes on your labels, uh, you want to automate the print process, we can do that as well. Um, you can look into our Sentinel and Label Archive and TechLink Central software. And it's going to be a short survey after the webinar. And if you do indicate you'd like to learn more, we'll reach out to you. So let's move into that Q&A section. So again, you're gonna to wanna to leverage that, uh, that chat window in the webinar. So you expand that, type in your question, click submit. Um, I'm just gonna take a few seconds to read through any questions uh, submitted so far. So give me just a moment while I open up that window and take a look. Uh, early on, there was a question about using, uh, you know, with a spreadsheet database, can you use Excel or Cloud, uh, Excel Cloud Shared File? You certainly can, as you saw. Um, you're showing this in CodeSoft. Does this apply to Label Matrix as well? So CodeSoft and Label View are pretty much identical, the user interface. Uh, the Label Matrix interface, as you know, is a little bit different. You can certainly connect to uh, databases with Label Matrix. You just don't have as much functionality as you would with CodeSoft and LabelView. Uh, there's a question I think earlier about, uh, does it have to match exactly? This is probably regarding table lookups. Yeah, uh, it does. Uh, so you saw when, I was pulling that record, and I think the key value was Doris. All I did was take out that S so that it became Dory and everything went blank. So yes, it does need to match exactly when you're using a table lookup. With me, I'm just going through a few of these questions here. So, if you're new to da uh, databases, what's the what are some suggestions for either creating, hosting, or making a server? Um, it doesn't even necessarily have to be a server. Well, you would, so you would. Trying to break this down. So you'd want an internal network. You'd want a, a shared domain so that you, or at least a work group so that you can share files between the PCs. At that point, you probably just want to map a drive. Um, you don't really need a dedicated server, but again, you do need that domain or at least work group so that you can share files between them. Um, and at that point, it's just going to be centralized, not necessarily to a server. It would just be centralized to a workstation, but it would still be where 
all of the other workstations are pulling from. So you'd want to keep in mind that would want to be powered up running while you're trying to have the other workstations pull from it. Um, and again, if you're new to it, everybody knows a little bit of Excel. That's probably the, the best starting point. Um, Excel files can be brought into Access. Um, Access would probably be the next step up from Excel. Um, it's a very slim down relational database. And then, um, and you, it, it, sort of in that case, you, you probably wouldn't need SQL or Oracle. Um, again, that's when you, you probably have a DBA or some sort of internal IT hosting that SQL database. So that it's not exactly for beginners, unfortunately. I still struggle with it occasionally. But again, the uh, best starting point uh, is, is my personal suggestion would be Excel, and then you can upgrade to Access. So the question about what version of label view would need to have access to the web based, um, the latest version is going to be 2021. So it would be our 21 software. Oh, there was a question on um, how did we add images? Uh, give me just a moment. Let me switch back to the VM. We can go over that real quick. All right, so let me pull up a blank label again here. So we'll use this, uh, that identity table again. So I'm gonna make the, the same connection uh, that we did earlier. So I didn't place anything on the label. We just have the variables on the right. I'm gonna pull the first name onto the label. We'll just choose as an image. Now for this to work, the image itself needs to be in a specific directory. It needs to be in the images directory. So you'll go to tools, configuration, default folders, and second from the top, this is our default uh, images directory. So again, you can click on the browse button and have it pull from a different directory, but the image itself needs to be in this directory for this to work. Bear with me, I'm just pulling up that questions window again. Okay, just caught up to where I was. Um, let's see, next one was, uh, do the labels and database connections transfer okay when you upgrade your version of label view? Um, yes, they do. Now, so if you're upgrading the software, it's not going to overwrite or remove labels. Um, labels no longer have to go through a converter unless you're changing software. So if you're going from like label view to code soft, the labels need to be converted. But if, but if you're just going from 2018 to 2021, there's no conversion necessary. They'll just open up in the software. Uh, but again, when you are, there's three things that kind of come into play when you're pulling from a database. It's the label itself, which usually is not gonna be an issue. Uh, the connection string, um, which is not going to get overwritten and then the database. Um, so as you're going through your upgrade process, if the location of the database changes, that'll break the connection. Uh, so you wanna keep that in mind.
Does Excel, okay, so there's a question saying, why does Excel have to be installed on a client PC to access an Excel S file? Uh, it does not need to be. So my, my virtual machine that I was using for this webinar did not have Excel installed on it. Um, I was using an Excel file, I was using access files, but you don't need the actual Excel or access software installed on the machine. Um, when you install the software, it's going to install the drivers, um, the access database drivers. So you'll be able to pull from Excel files and access files and, and you know, SQL databases, but none of the actual database software needs to be installed in the software. Um, I've come across issues where you install the software, but maybe the person doesn't have you know, full admin rights, so some of the drivers don't get, get installed. Um, that will cause issues. Um, and the fix is at that point, you can either install Excel or Access, that's obviously going to install the drivers and then it will make it work. But again, you don't need the actual software installed. You could just go onto Microsoft site, grab the Access database drivers, install those. Once the drivers are on the machine, uh, the software will be able to pull from those files. Uh, but again, if you have full admin rights, if you're installing as an admin, um, all of the drivers should get installed with the software. Uh, this next question, um, I brought this up a little bit earlier. I might have uh, kind of glanced over it or, or talked a little too quickly, but uh, if you, you're using, uh, it sounds like you're using Label 2018 uh, when opening a label that uses Excel. If a second user opens a label that uses, a label that uses the same Excel sheet, the user's locked out. Um, so I touched on that briefly. Yes, those flat files will get locked out and spreadsheets will get locked out. So, so if that is, um, if that's a concern for you, or if it cannot be locked out while the software is pulling from it, that's when you want to move to a relational database. That's either going to be Access, SQL, or Oracle. And then a follow up to getting images on the label. Um, no, the, the image is not embedded in the Excel sheet. It's just the file name. So if the image itself is in that images directory, all you need is the file name. Um, there's that second case where maybe you have multiple subdirectories, so you can't place all of your images in that one directory. And if that's the case, then you can use the full path name up to an existing, uh, up, up to and including, I'm sorry, the uh, file extension. Okay, so this, I should have seen this coming. This, this last question is a bit of a doozy and I apologize ahead of time. How do you convert 100 plus individual files into a spreadsheet? Um, there's no conversion. You, you don't take the label. If you have 100 plus existing labels, you can't just convert them into a spreadsheet. You'd have to you know, open up a spreadsheet and start typing that data in, unfortunately. Um, might take a while, but it's going to save you time in the long run. Um, but really all you need in there is the variable data. So if you have like a part number, description, quantity, some other variable, that, that's all you're adding because you can have those static fields on the label and those won't need to be updated. Interesting question. So let's say you add five new parts to a SQL database. Is there a way to show the new additions? Um, there's not just a new filter, but you can use custom SQL queries. So um, let me switch back over to that VM. I can show you where that's at. Give me just a moment here. All right, we should be back in there. So this was just the standard database connection. Um, if you have an existing connection, you can right click and choose create edit query. So choosing the, the data source, the table, the columns, that's all what we consider standard, but you can jump over to SQL. 
you'll see a little state uh, SQL statement. So you can do things like, you know, order by, you know, whatever field you want to order by. And have it be ascending or descending. Um, and then it will filter your data accordingly. You can also use the SQL Query Builder. Um, that's just going to be a GUI for doing exactly what I did. But if you're if you're managing your own SQL database and you're pretty familiar with SQL statements, you can just pop those in there. Question about, um, I'm looking to add a QR code and possibly a barcode to each label. This would go back to link to our website. Um, pulling up the, inf okay, so this would go back to link to our website, pulling up the information on the label. Uh, how do I go about linking that together? Um, so even the website, if the website is displaying information, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of investigation. So the information needs to be stored somewhere. So that, that's what you're going to pull from. Um, it, it's going to be a database. Maybe it's uh, hosted by the, the website. Um, they might be able to do exports for you. Um, I don't have, unfortunately, a good answer for you, but I can tell you that the data is going to be stored somewhere. Uh, you know, if, you, if you're displaying information on a website, it, it's pulling it from some type of database. You just need to find out where that database is. Um, once you locate it, uh, you can try to, I mean, you can try to export it and then you can connect that, but it uh, uh, doesn't really matter what type of database that they're using on the website, we're going to be able to connect to it because all you need is the database driver. But the, uh, the hardest part probably for you is going to be locating, locating that data. Looks like the questions are sort of dying down. I'm just going to wait a few more moments, see if any pop up. not seeing any more questions pop up here. So um, I do want to point out, you know, if you do think of something after we disconnect, you can always reach out to our support team. Um, we'll have the number on the next slide. That's exactly what they're there for. So let us know how we did uh, after we close down the webinar here, after I disconnect, there's going to be a short survey. Um, suggest some future topics. We've got a few other topical training webinars that we've gone through. Um, we've done some deep dives in formulas, um, automating the print process. Um, I should point out those are available if you do want to reach out to that support team. But uh, again, any feedback is good feedback. So let us know how we're doing. A few more questions popped up as I was uh, explaining that. Um, can CodeSoft treat the first row as field? Uh, field uh, I see what you're referring to. Uh, yes, it can. So um, when you're pulling from a spreadsheet, the first, we'll use Excel as an example, uh, record one should always be headers because when you connect to CodeSoft or LabelView, um, it's going to pull in that first record and use those as column headers. So if you're creating a spreadsheet in Excel, or a DBF file, um, or even a comma-separated file that you know doesn't have headers, um, 
it's going to use that first record as the headers. So you might lose one record of information if you don't have column headers. It's not going to do that with relational databases because you are forced to have column, uh, column names. So you don't have to worry about that with Access or SQL or Oracle or any of those uh, um, relational databases, um, but it will do that for SQL, um, DBF files, some flat files. Um, but yeah, you want to keep that in mind. All right, looks like we ran out of questions. I wanna again, thank you for joining me on this webinar. Hope you have a good rest of your afternoon. Uh, we'll leave the chat open for a little bit longer after I disconnect to make sure we get all the questions. But uh, uh, if you do think of something after we close down the webinar, reach out to that customer support number. That's exactly what they're there for. And again, hope you all have a good rest of your afternoon.